Hey guys, it's Sandra here from Carcraft Auto Detailing in Melbourne. Today's video is part 4 in the How to Professionally Detail a Vehicle series. In this video, I'm going to be having a look at some light metal polishing in relation to oxidation removal and restoring clarity and brilliance to the finish, as well as some basic plastic trim hand polishing. So like I've stated in the previous videos, this is not a full-blown correction detail. It's about producing an overall improved finish whilst working to a budget and time frame. The truth is that to restore the metal alone on this vehicle to a like new appearance would involve some grinding and multiple stages of sanding and metal compounding, all of which would probably take longer than the whole detail itself. And quite honestly, even if the owner had the money and desire to fully restore the metal, it would probably be cheaper for him just to replace the bumper. But having said that, hopefully you'll agree once you see the results, that even some fairly basic metal polishing not only brings it back to life, but also greatly aids in improving the overall finish of the vehicle. I've been using California Customs Purple Metal Polish for some time now, but I more recently got onto the company's Aluminium Deoxidizer and I absolutely love the way it works in conjunction with their metal polish. So basically, the deoxidizer is wiped on and worked over the metal. It's left on the surface to continue working while you begin to work the metal polish over it. What it does is greatly aid in breaking down and in the removal of the metal's oxidation. Then the polish itself, with its fine abrasives, will continue to lift that oxidation as well as refine any minor blemishes and light scratches to restore a nice amount of brilliance to the finish. And the purple polish also contains a sealant that will help protect the metal from further oxidation. The thing with hand polishing metal is that you can't be shy. You really need to put some real elbow grease into it as well as apply some heavy pressure. Remember, metal is on another level in compared to paint. It's a far harder surface that requires you to respond with a bit more aggression to achieve decent results. Personally, I prefer to use microfiber pads to apply the metal polish, as I find they work a little better than foam pads. Also, I use some of my cheaper microfiber cloths to remove the residue, and more often than not, I'll just throw them out after the job. Sometimes the metal residue can be really hard to wipe off and remove. In those instances, I'll spray on some waterless wash to help and aid with the removing of the stubborn residue. And don't be afraid of using the applicator pads that instantly turn black when metal polishing. It's just the way it goes with this medium. The reason I prefer to do any metal polishing before starting on the paint correction is that metal is a messy medium to work with and the residue that comes off the metal can quite easily scratch, mar or stain the paint. Whereas a bit of clear coat residue isn't really going to affect the metal to the same degree. So really what I've allowed myself is an hour and a half to two hours to get the metal to a higher standard. And that includes the front bumper and grille the rear metal bumper and the cargo side and top roll bar. I know that if I had time to hit this bumper one or two more times with the polish, you'd definitely notice an improvement in the finish. But part of being a business owner and trying to stay profitable is making sure that you not only deliver on what you have promised, but that you also don't chase perfection unless you're being paid to do so. As it's a quick way to run both yourself and your business into the ground. Also, for the purpose of this video, I wanted to do both some hand and machine metal polishing comparisons. So the rear bumper was machine polished, as we'll get to in a bit. I'll just slightly speed up the video footage as I finish up the rest of the bumper. And I'll start up the commentary again once we get to the plastic front grille and headlight polishing.
light hand polishing on non-porous plastics and particularly shiny plastics, I've been using Meguiar's Plastex for many years now. I've just found that it has the perfect blend of super fine abrasives and cleaning ability that works particularly well for most automotive plastics. If the plastic surface is in especially bad shape, I'll step up to a more aggressive compound to start with and then finish with plastics. But as you can see, the front grille is just going to need a light once over with a fine polish to restore its shine. The headlights as well are in remarkable shape and again, a very light hand polish is all they'll need to look new again. I tend to use a microfiber cloth to apply plastics spread it around the area and using moderate pressure I make sure it's evenly worked into the surface and cleanly buffed off. Once the whole vehicle has had its final stage of polishing all the clear and metal like plastics will receive the same sealant and or wax as the paint to also protect their finish. I'll just quickly give you a look at the cargo roll bar metal polishing before we move on to the rear bumper. This was pretty much restored as per front bumper. A coat of California Customs deoxidizer was worked on primarily. It was left to sit on the surface while the purple metal polish was worked over with some real elbow grease using a microfiber pad and then wiped off using a microfiber cloth. Onto the final metal polishing trim, which is the rear bumper for this job. Like I said, this was mostly polished by machine using the Ripes Nano iBread with the long throw dual action attachment. So just like hand polishing, I first applied the deoxidizer by hand over the entire bumper. Then using the Ripes yellow polishing pad, I spread it over a section and worked the machine at its highest speed of 5 using moderate pressure. The rear bumper is divided into 4 sections as you can see. I've masked the surrounding plastics and trim to make the cleanup process a little easier. Overall, if I was going to do more of a restoration of the metal, I would have definitely used machine polishing as much as possible for its speed and superior correcting ability. But for some basic oxidation removal and light polishing, both methods seem to work fairly evenly with no huge advantage either way. The issue is that even with the Ripes Nano being as small as it is, there are still areas that it was too large to fit into and that I still had to hand polish. But like I said, if I was using a more aggressive compound, and even just doing a two-stage polish on this metal, I know that even though some parts would have to be hand polished, this little machine and even the use of my 3-inch DA polisher would save me a lot of time and produce superior results. Hopefully I'll get to show you some full metal restoration in the future as a good comparison. Well that's just about it for part 4 of this series. I hope you stay tuned for part 5 which we'll be looking at some colour wet sanding as well as a bit of paint touch up. I'll add some links to a few of the products I've used in the description box. I'll leave you with the footage of me finishing up the bumper. I really hope you enjoyed and found this video useful. Please like, comment and subscribe to show your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.